Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and this is the third of five videos where I show you how you can add a UI image picker controller to your Swift UI app so that you can both select a photo from your photo album or take a photo with your device's camera. In this, the first of three videos in part two, where we add more functionality to our app, we'll be adding data persistence so that we can save and retrieve our images on subsequent launches. We'll also be adding another error enum to handle and present alerts to our users should there be any problems encountered during that process. Before I get started, I just wanted to ask that if you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Make sure you ring the bell to be notified of future videos. Comments and likes are always appreciated. And if you care to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. If this is something you want to learn, then keep watching. If you are following along with this series, you can continue to use your code from the last video. However, if you're just starting here, I provided the completed project from the last video and you can download it from the link in the description below. Well, now that we have the ability to pick a photo from the photo album or take a photo with our camera, we want to be able to save that photo to the application's documents directory and be able to retrieve and display those images after each launch. We also want to be able to assign a name to the image and be able to delete or change the name at any given time. We could use something like Core Data or a remote service like Firebase for this, but I'm going to choose to save the image to the application's documents directory and a corresponding entry in a quotable object so that we will be able to reference the image and the name that we provide for it and then store a JSON string representation of that array of objects in the documents directory as well. The first thing we want to do then is to create our model. So inside the models folder, create a new file and call it my image. And inside, create a struct with the same name and make sure that it conforms to the identifiable and codable protocols. Since it conforms to the identifiable protocol, we'll need to make sure that it has an ID property. So we'll create one and we'll initialize it as a UUID. The second one is a variable that we'll call name and it will be a string. It's the ID property that we'll be using as the image name for our object. In file manager file then, we need to create some functions that will allow us to save and restore this information. First of all, we'll need to decide on a name for our JSON file. Now I've already set up a global constant here, and I'm going to enter a name for my file, and I'm going to call it myimages.json. The first two functions that I'm going to create will pertain to saving and reading the files to the documents directory. Now we already have this static property that references the documents directory URL, so we can use this. So first the save document function. Create a function called save document and it will have one parameter, a string that will be the content of our JSON file and that is also going to be a string. If something goes wrong with the saving, however, an error might occur. So we're going to have to throw an error that I'll be able to deal with in an alert. So before we go any further, we'll need to create an error enum. And I want to deal with any possible errors that we're going to possibly run into when we load or save our images and our JSON file. So in the models folder, create another new file and call it my image error. Inside, we'll create an enum of the same name and make sure that it conforms to both the error and the localized error protocols, just like we did for our previous error in the first two videos. We're going to have four possible cases when we are reading or saving our data. We could get a read error if the file is somehow corrupt. Or we could get a decoding error when we try to decode the JSON. 
if we hadn't coded it properly. Similarly, we could get a coding error when I try to encode the JSON, or a save error when trying to save it back to the Documents folder. Now we're going to use this to present an alert to our users. So we'll use a localized error description associated with each of these errors. So we'll need a computed property called error description, which is an optional string. And we will then need to switch on self, letting Xcode generate the cases for us. Now for each one of these errors, we can create a corresponding NS localized string. For the read error, we can say, could not load my image JSON. Please reinstall the app. Let's copy and paste it in for the decoding error, but change the string to be, there was a problem loading your list of images. Please create a new image to start over. For the encoding error, we can say, could not save your image data. Please reinstall the app. And finally, for the save error, we'll say, could not save my image JSON. Please reinstall the app. Now, if we get an error, we want to be able to present an alert. So, just like before, we can do the same thing. We'll create a struct here, but we'll call it error type, that conforms to the identifiable protocol. We'll have an ID property that is a UUID, and an error that is one of my my image errors and a computed message property that is a string, that's the error's localized description. This is exactly what we did in the previous example in the first two videos. Of course, now we're going to need to change our import to SwiftUI so that we can create a button property. And that button will simply be a button with no action, a label of OK, and a role of cancel with that empty action. Now we can return to our file manager and complete our functions. In the save function, and we can let the URL be our docdir URL, and we'll append the path component, which is our file name. Then we can try to write it, which means we'll need a do catch block, because it could throw an error. We'll try to execute the contents write function to the URL setting atomically to true using UTF-8 encoding. If it fails then, in our catch block, we'll throw the myImageError.save error. In order to read that save document back, we'll create another function called read document. And it may fail as well. So we'll make it throwing. But if it is successful, we'll return some data. We'll then get that same URL as above. And then we'll try to extract that from the URL. Of course, again, this needs to be done within a do catch block. And we'll catch that throwing error and throw my image error dot read error. Well, now that we have functions for reading and writing our JSON to the documents directory, we'll need to do the same for our images. In the case of an image, I'm not passing in a string to be saved as a JSON file with a known name. Rather, I'm going to be passing in an image along with a UUID that I can use as the name for that image. Remember, our image struct has an ID property. 
so our JSON file will only contain that ID and a name property that is the ID that will reference our image in the Documents folder. So to save an image, let's create a new Save Image function that will have two parameters, the ID, which is a string, and an image, which is a UI image. And we're going to mark it as a throwing function. Now, because our images might be rather large, I'll want to compress them into a smaller JPEG image before I save them. This also may fail. So we'll have to use an if let here to extract the data and we'll use a compression quality of 0 0.6. If that isn't successful, then we'll throw an error. Now, this is not the same as a save error that we had for our document. So we'll need to return to our my image enum and create a new case. And while we're at it, we'll create one for reading our image back as well, because that will also have a possibility of failing. So save image error and read image error. And then for our error description, then we'll need these two new cases. In the case of a save image error, we can say, could not save image, please reinstall app. For the read image error, could not load image, please reinstall the app. Well, now that we have the error case, if the image can't be compressed, we can now throw the save image error. So to complete our function here, then we'll need to create a file name out of our ID and append that as the path component to our document directory URL. And it will be a JPEG, so we'll add the JPG as the extension. Then within a do catch block, we'll try to write the data to that file name. If that fails, we'll catch the error and throw a my image errors save image error. To read our images back, I'll need to know the ID of the image so that I can retrieve it. But this too may fail, so we'll need to mark it as a throwing function as well. Then we can form our URL by appending the ID and JPEG suffix to the document URL path. And then within a do catch block, we can try to extract the contents of the URL as image data and catch any errors by throwing a my image errors read image error. If we're successful extracting the data, we'll need to use an if let to create a UI image out of it and return the image. If we can't, then we'll throw another read image error. Well, now we have everything that we need to finish our app. In the first two images, I showed you how to pick and select an image from either the photo album or from a camera. And in this video, we created the functions and error enums that are necessary for loading and saving our images and data to the documents directory and presenting any possible errors to our users in an alert. In the next video in this series, We'll start to improve our UI so that we can actually now save the images. And then in the final video, we'll be able to load and present them and allow us to use these functions and others to update.